Bitcoin has continued to act almost identically in the way that it's always acted in the past. I love Dave the Wave. He's somebody I've been following for a long time. I actually, I, I'm, I subscribe to his newsletter. It's cheap. It's like 50 bucks a year. The dude is very, very eloquent. Uh, and he subscribes to what you're looking at here is a logarithmic curve. But it's basically, you know, price has followed this particular curve for a long time. When it's in the lower quadrant of this curve, it's your best buying opportunity. And when it gets to the top, best selling opportunity. He literally ignores the macro. He ignores everything. He just shows Bitcoin price, which seems to continue to follow uh, the the same pattern that it always has. So can we go back to the other one as well? I just, before I give thoughts, I want to, the first, yeah, you the wanna... first one you showed. So uh, I think, you know, in, inarguably, you know, there are a lot of similarities to 2019. And, and if you believe in technical analysis, uh, it has been spelled out time and time again on Twitter, that you know, this similarities are there, and it's kind of hard to argue. Like honestly, if you if you look at the chart uh, and you look at the many different great people from TA on crypto Twitter, uh, that argument is is valid, and and I can understand why it's there. Like I think the point of the segment is: is this time different? Like is like can can we can we use historical chart data to say you know what we know that in 2023 going into 2024 things are going to turn out the same? You know, I think that Austin and I possibly you're in two different camps that's what i like about the show because austin trolls me and tells me i'm dumb and then we just continue to move on i've never so, said you're dumb why i would never <laughs> call you a name directly uh, to your face i'd do it behind your back that's right hey guys while we're going through this tell us how you feel about the market let us know if you think that historical performance of bitcoin based on the stuff that we're showing you is uh indicators that the future is going to be the same would love to hear your opinion in, 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 in a world where we've all gotten an MBA on macroeconomics, uh, forcefully so, when I try to go to sleep at night to say that macro has separated itself from the future of what Bitcoin is going to do, uh, being tied to SPX, being tied to the dollar, being tied to all of the things we talk about all the time on this show and on Across the Chains, uh, I've got a hard time saying that this time is going to be different, the same as previous times, that, that this time won't be different. Uh, and so, you know, stocks are down, like rates are going much higher, although, you know, the SPX has actually looked quite decent. Uh, household debt is at a record 16.9 trillion. The housing market's falling at the fastest pace since 2011. The two-year treasury notes, the highest it's been in 2007. Uh, and inflation is rising, so they think, potentially for this next readout, uh, for the first time since in October, it's impossible to at least not bring up the argument that this time is different. You know, as much as I love to believe that TA, and, and by the way, TA works. Like, I don't care what all, you know, a lot of the flutters say and, and what Nick Dracon's feelings are on it or et cetera. Uh, TA does work. And, uh, and so history does repeat itself. I'm just not, I'm not one to jump in and say that this is 2019 all over again, because we've never, Bitcoin has never been in a bull rally that's faced the, the, the macro and the economic headwinds that we are seeing today. Plus a war going on in Ukraine, which is further, you know, complicating the situation. So, so I'm not ready to to say yes. This is exactly where we are, and this is going to repeat itself. And so that's kind of where I am. Uh, could Bitcoin have a good year? Yeah, it could. Um, it's you know, it's a it's a finite asset. There's only a certain amount of them, and and as things continue to get worse, uh, either both macroeconomically or globally, Bitcoin could be a safe haven that people now turn to and say, you know what. You know, I'm getting out of the traditional financial system because it's just too uncertain. There's too much, you know, too much volatility, too much instability, et cetera. So this could become a safe haven. I'm just not ready to jump in and say, Dave the Wave, these kind of charts, this is the future. We must follow it, et cetera. So I digress. So, all right. So I am actually going to take the other side of that. Is is the macro really sh Totally. It sucks. Is the potential for another black swan event uh, out there? Absolutely. But to say that, that Bitcoin hasn't faced this insane macroeconomic uh, headwind before is actually incorrect uh, because, you know, we're looking at Bitcoin in 2019 here breaking out. But if you pull up a chart and we all know what happened March 13th and 14th of 2020, that's when the official COVID lockdowns went into place right now. We had rates at, at very, very low levels at that point. I mean, they were they were at or near zero. They cranked up the money printer uh, and they cranked it up hard. And I want to tell you that that from 3,500, which was really the bottom of that dip, all the way until we broke 10K, they were all calling for new lows. Yep. All of them. I mean, not all of them, but, but you had the guys on Twitter that were certain we were going to new lows. We were going to new lows, right? And the way that I view this, and you know, I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I view this in the way, you know, 
like let's say you had a slingshot mm -hmm. you're just pulling it back you're just pulling it back right and and the second we get anything that says release the money the money is going to get released the people that are going to be hardest hit by recession and inflation are going to be people that are paycheck to paycheck to say that retail is going to be hurt retail is not the one driving most of these markets retail right. does drive the market but it drives the last leg. It's like you take my dad, he wanted to buy Bitcoin when it was 40,000, wouldn't touch it when it was four, you know, that right. sort of thing, right? That's when retail drives. So I, I'm, I'm actually going to take the opinion that the macro could delay the return to the bull, right? Like we're, we're too uncertain to say we're in a full bull market. I don't think anyone's sitting around going saying, well, you know, this is 100% guaranteed we're sitting in a bull market. Not like we did last year when we broke 10K and just went boop like that, you know? Right. Um, but, but I remain on the bullish side and I, and I have to, I have to let you guys know that a lot of my perspectives come from the place of my personal investing strategy, which is not short term. It's not as a trader, right? It is, it is me being willing to make big bets for the long term and let them play out. Right. And I have some of those and I feel very well positioned in the place that I personally am. And if the market tanks down to new lows, it's just a delay. Getting inflation down is a lot more difficult than getting out of a recession. Yep. I'm gonna say it again. Getting inflation down is a lot more difficult than getting out of a recession, right? Raising rates has to be done methodically. It has to be done over time. It has to be done in a way to not crater your economy so bad that you get you know, your population revolting. If we were to go into a recession, which According to the NFP, uh, we may not be, be having that. We might actually have the soft landing. But if we were to go into a recession, they can turn that money printer on real, real quick.